Hey guys! Hi. We're so back. we're back. We're back on the screen. It's been a while since we've been um, doing vlogging, but we are now back for good. Um, especially because we have extra time in isolation to do so. So we thought we'd get back into our London vlogs because they went really well, and a lot of people responded to them really well. It's kind of things that people want to hear about it, and a lot of people do make the move, as we said, from Australia to London and from London to Australia. So we thought we'd have some tips and tricks that we'd share. And this time around, we're going to talk about when we moved back from London, back home after our visas ran out. A very sad so time sad. in our lives. <laughs> yes, very sad, but it did have to happen. Um, and it did just happen, just in the nick of time, before actually all the coronavirus things started happening. So we were very lucky to have been able to move over um, and sort out our move and everything like that and not get locked into London. Um, after all this kind of stuff happened. The first tip that we're gonna give you guys if you're moving home from London is about shipping your stuff back because that's probably the biggest thing on your mind. Like, you'd be surprised over two years how much shit you accumulate. Like, I was genuinely shocked. Yep. Um, but we went through Kiwi Movies, who we found on the Kiwis and London Facebook page, which I think we've talked about in every vlog we've done. There's so much useful info on there. So we went through them. The whole process was super easy. Um, like, they come and pick everything up from your house. Um, my advice, so like make sure that you organize this. I would say get in contact with them at least a month before your leaving date because there's a lot of paperwork you have to get mm -hmm. through. Um, there's a lot of like forms and things you have to send out and also it's expensive. So like make sure you have enough money to do it. And also they only pick up from Central London Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays. And so like say if you only do it a week before and that's a really busy week and all their pickup slots are full the next week, you have to pay, like they will come and pick it up on another day, but you have to pay extra. So make sure that you look into this about a month before you go home, just to give yourself enough time. I think it cost us, oh, I can't even remember. How much did it cost now for five suitcases? Oh, I can't remember. It was a couple of hundred pounds, I think. It's gonna be cheaper than doing it, like taking extra baggage on the airline, exactly. and also then you have to carry it. So this is definitely an easier way, but something to keep in mind is that um, Kiwi Movers aren't the guys who receive it in Australia. So for example, we Chess Movers have collected our stuff for us in Adelaide now, and you will have to pay extra fees when it comes to Australia that you don't originally pay. So I think we ended up having to pay an extra $110. I think everything went pretty smoothly. Like I would recommend Kiwi Movers. They were very responsive as well. Like every time we had questions and things. And we sent how many suitcases? Six, five. So five. We sent so five suitcases together, in total. I, I sent two, two, two suitcases and Kristen sent three, and obviously that cut the cost for the both of us if we sent it together. So if you have yeah. a friend you can send it with yeah. um, and to get the suitcases as well Argos like they have the cheap suitcases yeah, Argos massive ones, ones. Um, that you could just stuff and they don't have to be good quality because it's not really like you're going to yeah. use them again on to our next point is kind of maybe organizing a month or so for a little bit of travel before you leave I personally organized to have a month and a half before leaving of actually just randomly traveling and not like kind of pre-planning it. I maybe had like one plan to go to Ukraine because that's where I'm from and that's where my heritage is from so I wanted to see that for sure but other than that I ended up in random countries around Eastern Europe um, like literally planning things on the day being like I'm gonna hop on this bus and go here because I had no I had saved money knowing that I'd have that one month up at the end of my work period and before I'd be leaving um, and I saved just enough to kind of like last me and also Eastern Europe is a trip trip to you to do. Yeah. So you can do Eastern <laughs> Europe if, you, if you're if you short of money like we are. <laughs> exactly, just like we were. Because obviously it's like not cheap to move back home either because you need to pay for the flights and things like that. So if you want to do a cheap holiday, do Eastern Europe. Um, and it just worked out for me because my contract ended at STA Travel then. And so I booked some random flights the week before, headed out of the country. Um, missed at least three flights in one week. Don't know how that happened, but if anyone knows me, they know that this is a common Mel mistake. So it wasn't so much of the end of the world as it was just a pure annoyance. <laughs> um, and I hopped between like Poland, Budapest, um, like I ended up in, uh, where, where you went to Norway for New yeah. Year's. Actually, I came then, that one. <laughs> yeah, Kristen joined halfway along the way and then yeah. effed off again. Um, and then finally ended up in Ukraine. Um, and then I still returned back, obviously, in time to kind of gather all my things within, I think I had one and a half weeks or maybe two weeks to organize all my stuff before I left because you still do want 
at least one week to sort out your stuff or you it's know. gonna take a lot longer than you think like I said before um, you're gonna be surprised at how much like shit you collect over the two years mm -hmm. and so it's gonna take you more time than you think to pack everything up donate everything clean out your room like get rid of it and all that kind of stuff on the other hand the other option is obviously keeping on working um, which I did mostly because I was very poor yes. <laughs> Um, I finished work. I honestly wouldn't recommend finishing work like the day before you leave because there's all people always ask these kind of questions and there is absolutely no flexibility with your end date. If your visa finishes on the 1st of February, you need to leave the country on the 1st of February. It's not like you, you know, finish work on the 1st of February and you, there's a couple days for you to like get your stuff together and leave. Like that's not the case. It's 1st of February. You need to get out. So like and you need to finish work before that kind of. Like I was going to say, a lot of people do say that you have got leeway, which is not true. They say it because they've done it themselves and they're like, oh, you know, I did just kind of, I don't know, stay one extra week. <laughs> I'm so bad. They just didn't get caught out. But if you get caught out, you you can risk a really bad fine. So you just don't want to work. You don't want to risk it. Yeah. You get blacklisted from the UK for five years. So that means you can't come back. Um, if you like, there are certain ways around it. Like for example, if you leave the UK and say like, just get the Eurostar to Paris and then back the next day, you can re-enter the UK on a tourist visa. But again, similar to people overstaying their visas, it's very like hit and miss. With the e-gates now, it's easier because you don't have a person questioning you. But if you come back into the UK like a day after your visa's ended, they will ask you lots of questions and there have been stories of people um, getting turned away if they don't have return flights back to Australia and stuff. So our advice is like, if you desperately want to do it, then leave the UK and come back on your tourist visa. Do not under any circumstances of work because you'll get blacklisted. Mm -hmm. But yeah, don't just overstay because if you are one of the unlucky ones that gets pulled up at the airport, you won't be able to return to the UK for five years. That can impact you in some other countries. Like for example, America can be a bit funny about this. If the UK have blacklisted you, you might have some trouble getting through customs in America. So it's not worth it. If your visa date is the 1st of February, fly out on the 1st of February. Talking about accumulating a whole bunch of stuff, um, obviously you can't take all of that back home with you. You can ship some stuff in suitcases like we did, but chances are if you're like us and you accumulated a lot of stuff, let's say you might not, you might not, yeah, you but might. a lot of you might. Don't worry okay? free spirit, all you've got is the backpack and camera yeah. but that was not us. That's not us, <laughs> um, a lot of you might, and uh, you're still going to have stuff left over, and what are you going to want to do with it? We tried selling a lot of our stuff, but uh, I did not use eBay, Kristen used eBay. I use strictly Facebook um, because I find it just really easy and also people like can just come in, they can give you cash in hand, it's like done and dusted and you can give them the item and go. And it works really well for household items, things like um, clothing bookshelves, clothing rails, um, things like, uh, I don't know, chairs, anything that you might have bought along the way that wasn't belonging to the house, that was furniture based, um, but it doesn't really work for things like clothes. There's just no point because, I mean, especially unless you have designer, high-end designer, it's really no point because look, there's actually a lot of people selling lots of crap online and it closes the number one thing people look at and they're like, ugh, that's yeah. just other people's worn clothes. And you'll like, find like clothes in the UK are very cheap. You can read like Primark. Like why would you buy someone's secondhand jumper for five pounds when you can go buy a brand new one for seven from Primark? So like um, as Noah was saying, I tried to sell a bunch of stuff on eBay. I tried to sell more like um, I guess clothes, accessories, bags and stuff like that. Um, my advice would be like don't bother. I didn't end up selling any of that stuff. Everything I did sell was like electronics or straighteners. Another thing along the process that you'll be doing is looking into renting out your room to the next person and a lot of people do stress about this all the time and in London I mean it, I guess it depends on where you live but really it's not that big of an issue because there's always people coming in. Obviously yeah. I don't know now about after all the coronavirus. Yeah things, I think I mean like speaking right now it's probably a bit different but yeah. you know in a year's time it's probably going to be It's going to go same, back to normal. Hopefully. Exactly. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> not professional. Um, damaged forecasters. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I actually put up the ad with a month to go or something like that and we only did one round of interviews on one Sunday and we had 16 people come to the house and all 16 of them wanted the room yeah. and it wasn't like a flash room or anything like 
and it, it was just I think it was a good price good location things like that but it's just London I had a full day um, of people coming to view the room um, I only put up the ad a couple days before and the first lady who came was like oh can I take it and I was like yeah I don't want to do interviews all day <laughs> yes, because they go so quick I think that's why people are so quick to just Straight make that rash decision down. because they're just like okay it's gonna go and I'm gonna regret if I don't just go for it so they're just like it's, it's a little bit different here when we were looking for houses it's a lot slower in the way that it's paced um, and back over there and sitting up by the way just for some clarification in case you didn't know which you should oh, uh, come on guys yeah. Like things you should do in advance make sure you organize to get your stuff picked up and sent home if you want to do some traveling before you leave you know finish up work and stuff early but don't worry too much about things like renting out your room I mean don't live until yeah. the day before but <laughs> yeah don't stress over those things they're like little things they might seem mm -hmm. like big things in the grand scheme of things but absolutely don't stress over things like that okay, so thanks for watching guys um, <laughs> and we'll try create more of these um, because we do have that extra time in isolation thank you isolation yeah we know that you guys seem to be interested in the move over even if they're not moving right now sorry guys to anybody who was supposed to be doing the move over right now and they can't because of corona we feel for you I hope they organize something like to give you back your money or extend your visas but yeah we'll be doing some other videos soon on maybe like tips on partying in London tips on getting cheap flights so stay tuned thanks